So the first thing that we can think about is dependency analysis, right? What are the things that we can do in parallel? And one way of doing it would be, look, the load operations that I had over here, right? This load edge dot D1 star A5 plus plus and star A6 plus plus, they ideally I should be able to put those in parallel one after the other, right? And what I can say is that if I could make use of this, right? So this is the A register file and this is the B register file. Okay, and this is D2 instead of D1, right? Once I have, have that, I can basically say that now I can sort of do both the loads in parallel. Why? Because they are not both going to be fighting for the register file, right? I have some kind of constraints on my register file. I can only either read or write a given value from it and you know all this incrementing pointer and so on. I can't do on multiple things at the same time. But that is where the fact that my hardware architecture had two such units becomes useful. Okay. I still have to have four no operations after this. I can't avoid that. And the multiply operation has to be changed slightly. It now has to use A2 and B3. Okay. Which means that this is sort of a cross register file multiplication. Okay, so that will help me to sort of shave off one clock cycle. Okay, not really what I'm looking for from 640, it will come down to 600. Okay, 16 cycles came down to 15, so 640 comes down to 600. Not bad, it's a 10% improvement, but at the end of the day, clearly, you know, there should be much more. Now, this not optimized properly is Apparently, I think something that TI uses, I don't know whether, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's one sort of good way of putting across a message, right? A knob stands for not optimized properly. Why do you say that? Essentially, what you're saying is that, you know, anytime that you have a lot of no operations in your code, you are probably missing, you are, you are sitting idle, you're right? Your hardware utilization efficiency, that's the best way of looking at it, is dropping. Okay. So what can you do to eliminate the no operations? fill the delay slots, right? You remember what I said about the two load operations, the second one can be put in the delay sl slot of the first one. And then we also had this thing where the subtract operation did not have any dependency on anything else, right? So now this is actually being like quite clever. What it's saying is I'm going to go in and put both of these operations into the delay slot of the load operation. Okay. Now think about it. This is actually very tricky because the branch instruction is now before doing any work, before the multiplication. And that is not a trivial thing. You have to sort of think through that and make sure that you understand this clearly, right? The fact that the branch instruction is now before the multiplication, if I look at it logically and if I think only in terms of what each operation is doing, this basically makes it look as though I'm going directly from here to here, right? Whereas in reality, what I'm doing is I'm going from here to here and then through this, right? Why am I doing that? Because the branch also has a guaranteed five delay slots after it. So I can be sure that the next five instructions are surely going to run, okay? By having these two no operations out here, what have I done? The load basically now has four delay slots, okay? And this is five delay slots for the branch, okay? So what are there in the four delay slots corresponding to the load operation? A subtract, a branch, and two no ops. What about the branch operation? There is the two no ops, a multiply, one more no op, and an add operation. So correctly five, everything fits together perfectly. That is much more significant, right? I managed to bring it down to eight cycles, basically 50% reduction. Right? And this is much more interesting. So now from 640, when I get down to 320, that looks a lot better. Okay. There are some more optimizations, obviously, that we can do. So let's continue. Okay. Now, what I'm looking at over here is loop unrolling. Okay. And this is a slight digression from what we have been discussing so far. 
And the reason I'm talking about it as a digression is because ultimately what we'll find is that I'm not actually going to use loop unrolling for this particular uh, uh, you know, uh, code. And that's not the best way to do it, in other words. Okay. But to illustrate the idea of loop unrolling, I want to just take another example. This is another example. This is not the dot product that I'm doing over here, right? Essentially, what I'm going to do is load two values, multiply add, OK? And basically have this uh, loop out here, OK? So clearly, I mean, this is only like four times, OK? So it's not the same loop as before, right? What we can say is, if I unroll like this, right? Essentially, what will end up happening is in order to find out what is the benefit of doing something like this, I need to insert all of those no ops, right? I need to put in no, op no ops over here. I need to put in a no op over here, right? And then basically figure out whether or not I'm actually getting some benefit from this no op type of operation. So. In this case, what we are doing is I can basically rewrite the code something like this, where I would basically say, I now have, you know, two loads, multiply add, two load, multiply add, and then I have the branch. Okay. So what happens over here, I'll basically have five delay slots and then go back, right? So rather than having this five delay slots, this will be multiplied by two, two times. Whereas in the previous case, I would have five delay multiplied four times. On the other hand, with a full unrolling, right, what I would have is no branch at all. And when I say no branch, I still have some no ops corresponding to each of the load operations and the multiply if possibly. But overall, I'll be able to get by with actually less number of ideal side trace. What's the problem? You can see that the code size has increased quite significantly, right? from a fairly compact code out here, which is only like seven lines of code to much more than that. It's basically like 15 lines or you know, more than doubled, right? The total number of instructions, okay? So in other words, if we did loop unrolling on this particular small example, right? What we would have is that we would have a loop count. It runs four times and ultimately it would take 21 clock cycles in order to execute. Keep in mind, this is not the dot product example I'm talking about, or rather not the original 40 times dot product that I'm talking about, okay? What I have over here is the code size would be seven. This would be the smallest, but slowest. Big memory consumption, but fast. So the thing to keep in mind over here is that, right? Uh, the other thing, because of the way that you are implementing it, the loop count that you have may not exactly match with the number of algorithmic implement uh, with with what is required by the algorithm right an example of that is what is given over here the loop still runs three times and this adding four is done separately outside okay this is also a form of unrolling not particularly useful maybe but it's a way by which i can basically unroll one instance one iteration of the loop okay so the bottom line is that in this particular case, we could have got by, by, you know, these are the trade-offs that I would have to make. Either I go for small code size, in which case the number of clock cycles is large, or I increase the code size to more than double, but the number of cycles could actually become half, close to half. Okay. So that is definitely a possibility that I could explore in this case. Right. But in our present instance, actually, we are not going to do that. So I'm leaving aside unrolling at this point and moving ahead. Okay. What I can do is instead to say, since I have these two hardware units, right? Why not try to sort of do two running sums at the same time, right? So basically I'll have something which basically does A0 into X0 plus A2 into X2 plus etc. And the other one will be A1 X1 plus A3X3 and so on. And then finally, add, right, to get the final result, okay? 
So basically what we'll end up with would be this, right? The final sum would end up being this plus this. Okay. Why is that useful? Because so far, apart from the load unit, right? I'm not really making use of any of the other units that have two pieces of hardware. So the multiply also I have M1 and M2, add also I have L1 and L2, right? Can I make use of those in order to do something better is the question, right? So ultimately what would happen is, you know, it's as simple as that. I mean, the main thing that I would need to do over here is, it is a little bit tricky over here. I've also sort of, you know, brushed a few things under uh, the carpet and, you know, not explained it uh, cleanly. But the bottom line in this particular case is that I'm actually working with 16 bit data and a 32 bit registers and buses, which is why I can do things like this. Effectively, what I have is this multiply high and multiply. In other words, what it takes is the high part of register and this is the low part of the register. A single 32 bit register is broken into two parts, one high and one low, and I then do separate multiplications on those okay so again like i said all that this is doing is making use of the fact that i have two multipliers two adders and trying to see how we can you know improve upon that where does that get me now things have improved to 20 iterations right because of the simple reason that i can actually basically do just the number of iterations reduces Okay, each one, the A0, A2 is only doing half of them. A1, A3 is doing the other half. They are both happening in parallel. Therefore, the same eight cycles as before, right? Everything else remains the same. I've come down to 160, okay? So the 640 down to 160 already looks like a tremendous improvement, okay? So worldwide meaning that basically, you know, I'm pulling in 32 bits of data versus the 16 bit data that is actually required. The final thing that really needs to be done, right, in order to really crunch this down into a small number of clock cycles is actually just summarized in this one slide. Okay. Unfortunately, it's not, it's, there's no clear, clean buildup to this particular thing. All that I can do is pretty much straight away say, okay, you know, this is what is the operation that needs to be done. Right. What am I doing over here? If you look closely at this slide, you will realize that this is actually doing a software pipelining, right? How is it doing software pipelining? It's basically saying the following. So I have a load followed by four blanks. I have a multiply followed by a blank. I have add, then I have subtract and I have branch followed by five blanks. Okay. And I want to basically repeat this. Okay. What this is effectively saying is how do I now take this entire thing and software pipeline it? What does software pipelining mean in this case? I need to do this load operation, etc., for the zeroth iteration. Okay. And similarly, I will have something else for iteration number one. So in other words, this will correspond to I try 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, whereas this will correspond to 1. Okay. And then I'll have 2, 3, etc. Okay. The question that I'm trying to answer is, if I wanted to sort of bring these closer, right, could I have made sure, right, after all, what I have in this particular case is the dependency that needs to be done is from this load to this one, right, load zero to multiply zero. Instead, supposing I wanted to have straight away something like load and multiply, right, If this was, let's say, 0 and this was 1, right? And let's say that I had only those two operations, right? So this was a load 0 and this was multiply minus 1. Would it have been enough? Okay. 
And the answer is not quite, because what I actually need after this is four cycles. Right? So instead, what I can do is load 0, some multiplication, load 1, some multiplication, load 2, some multiplication. Right? And if I then say I need to give four blanks after this, this can be m0, which means this would be effectively m minus 1 and m minus 2. Right? Or, you know, the m minus 1, m minus 2 are just the labels that I give over there. Effectively, what it means is, if this is the nth, if m corresponds to some nth value, right, then this is the corresponding nth value that I have over here, and this dependency is taken care of. This will correspond to n plus 2, n plus 1. This will basically be n minus 1 n minus 2. That is it. Right? So this is essentially what I'm trying to do in the form of software pipelining. I want to know where I can put the load and the corresponding next multiply so that the dependencies are satisfied. Okay? And with that in mind, let's look at what this picture looks like. Okay? So this corresponds to load 0. There are then 1, 2, 3, 4 blanks, which means this multiply dependency is satisfied. Now, from the multiply, I need one blank before I can go to the add. After the add, there is no real dependency. I'm done with the computation. Okay. The only other thing that I need to do, if I look at it, this is an independent of the multiply or add. Right. All that matters is there is a subtract and there is a dependency out here to the branch. And there is the branch followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, next iteration of the loop. But what does all this mean? It means that this part over here, this one block which I have marked as loop, all those instructions are now operating in parallel at the same time. Okay. So in other words, you have two load operations, two multiply operations, a branch operation and a subtract operation, and two add operations all happening in parallel. Okay. The one thing, of course, that needs to be done for that is the subtract operation had to be moved to the S type unit, whereas previously it was scheduled on an L type unit. Now it has to be moved to the S type unit. So now that also tells us that our S type unit has to be capable of handling the decrement required for loop counter operations. Okay. All of this, you know, cycles number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 corresponds to the prologue of the software pipeline. Effectively, what I'm saying is I start the load operations. I have to wait five clock cycles, then do a multiplication, wait two operations and then do an add. But from that point onwards, I am in steady state. Okay. I can basically now run the two loads, two multiplies, two adds, subtract and a branch, everything in parallel in a single clock cycle on the given hardware that I have because I have two adds, I have two L units. I have a branch and a subtract, I have two S units. Two multiplies, two M units, two loads, two D units. Okay. So effectively, this entire thing is the prologue corresponding to the software pipeline. Once I put this in, the code itself, what will it look like? I will need to take exactly what I have drawn over here, right? This diagram that I have drawn over here, the schedule diagram, and write it as this corresponds to cycle 0. Okay? This corresponds to cycle 1. This is cycles 2, 3, and 4. Will basically be copies of this. Okay? And you know, look at how this is being done, right? Basically, each one of them, even though I have a label over here, this, all the branch things that I'm talking about over here are actually jumping to this loop where this entire thing is one big instruction. What does that mean? It means that my instructions also have to be capable of holding so many different operations at the same time, right? I have to be able to tell the processor to do two loads subtract, branch, two multiplies, and two adds all in one instruction. But once I can do that, 
it means that this entire thing happens in a single cycle okay i just have to make sure that i have the appropriate the initial the prologue taken care of all of those instructions they will also be instructions of the same sort right this particular thing is what is called the very long instruction word or vliw architecture right it is the instruction itself is capable of holding eight or uh, the instruction word holds eight separate instructions inside it how many cycles does this finally take to execute it will finally come down to you know once i do the software pipelining and the uh, data uh, bus width right i will take one clock cycle for the loop it will run 20 times there will be seven instructions for the prologue and this is the epilogue right which basically means the final sum actually not the epilogue sorry this is not quite the epilogue but just the final sum if you look at the way the uh, code is uh, written you don't really need to do any other extra things after the code there's no epilogue as such for this so that's the bottom line i mean ultimately the this is sort of a contrived example of course but what it's trying to say is you know from the beginning we started out with this thing where we knew that these are the kinds of operations we need we need multiplication we need addition we need to do branching and of course load and store right how do i write the code it will take you know some number of instructions but then because of my architecture my load has this high latency and my branch also has a high latency ultimately i'll end up taking 640 clock cycles i can do some optimizations with no operations fill in delay slots this that and the other bringing things down considerably right i mean half the time basically but given that i have so much hardware and if i want to go for real full 100% uh, hardware utilization this is how i would do it i would actually bring it down in a complete and i would use software pipelining so that i can execute all of these operations at the same time right and keep that in mind this was enabled only by software pipelining the fact that each of these the add multiply load all of those in that loop step correspond to different iterations of the dot product or different portions of the dot product right and how did i figure out which portions are to be done basically by the fact that i could you know uh, stagger out the uh, operations such that the dependencies are taken care of by doing software pipeline 